Hello and welcome back to Tinkertube's lab. Recently I scored this nice spotlight from eBay and I thought, well, maybe we could build something useful out of it. Useful? Hmm. What is useful? I guess I should attach some kind of energy source like one of those nice small lithium polymer batteries to the spotlight and place it on a case where I put the battery into to use it as a portable floodlight for repairing my car for example or to use in emergency situations. So I grabbed some parts like this old cigarette lighter plug and this cheap Chinese battery gauge whatever it is it just displays some rough information about the charging stand of this uh, lithium polymer battery pack. I also got an old relay which switches at, at around 12 volts. A small switch, just some small toggle switch. And I also got an XLR plug socket. So. I guess at first we should start by disassembling this nice casing which is indeed waterproof as you can see looking at the IP ratings up here. So if I do everything correct I should be able to use this floodlight even in strong rain. For that I have to get a waterproof socket from uh, for, for the XLR connection. but. I don't have one of those lying around, so I will use this not waterproof one. But I can exchange it for waterproof socket at every time. So let's get started. At first I disassemble this case. Okay, the screws won't fall out, which is quite annoying at this time. I don't want to scratch my my nice leather imitate. Ah, uh, but whatever. So let's place this thing around. Um, I show it at a slight angle so you can see what I'm doing here. I am trying to place it at the back side of this casing because as you can see the floodlight has some weight around here so I don't want the whole assembly to be like ah oh, I'm sitting nice here oh there's a slight breeze of wind oh I have to fall Bams. that is not what I want so I assemble this one a bit shifted to the back to get a nice even dissipation of the weight from the floodlight around the casing. So let's... I, I'm just eyeballing it to the right position. Take a marker and mark the spots where I have to drill holes. That is done. Now we should choose... Mm, I would like to use M4 screws. Maybe even bigger than that. Let's take a look. What do I have? Well, maybe we should choose M5. Ooh! That looks nice just found those screws without screw heads at whatever do you call those um, but I don't think I will use those mm -hmm. yeah I guess I will try to use those small flathead here they have a 
quite big screw head so I don't have to use any washers here maybe they are a bit too short we will see just try it so I choose M5 what size of drill I need for M5 I don't know let's measure it Wow, that was kind of predictable. I need five millimeters. No need for center punching. Because this uh, case has a rough structure on the top, I don't really don't have to use a center punch. The drill stays exactly where, what, where I want it to be. Some nice holes, at least from the outer side. So let's try if I can get that to fit. Yes, it fits. Snugly, <laughs> which is exactly what I wanted. So, are you long enough? I hope so. Uh, looks, that looks quite okay. At least it's long enough to try it. Yeah, it works perfectly. That is nice. I actually hate, I hate it when these screws stand over the the nuts, like half a kilometer. This is, I I I just absolutely hate it. Like using this screw for screwing this into it. That is just disgusting so we use some nice small screws to make it fit perfectly where it belongs and the last one I'm just tightening it by hand for now So just we have to put this cable through here again. And as you can see I leave some space around here for the tilting and shifting operation this uh, nice spotlight is able to do. Please go back to the middle. Thanks. So let's seal this puppy by just giving a generous amount of hot glue around this nut and also on top on the, of the bolt. We could just install the XLR connector. Um, by the way, I chose a three-pole XLR because I want to use this uh, self-made lithium battery pack I made a video of. And um, as you can see, it is a three-series, um, a, a, a three-in-series battery pack. So I need a oh, weight. I just notice I can't count. I need a four pole. <laughs> I need a four pole connector. Just wait a minute. As I said from the first beginning, we need a five pole connector um, <laughs> to connect this battery pack because we have uh, a three in series. Um, um, 
Uh, I forgot what I want to say. Oh my god, what's going on today? Um, we have three cells in series, so I just need actually four connectors. But, well, I have this five pin connector lying around, so we take it. Uh, I want to I want to use it as some kind of combination of charging and uh, sensing socket. So we will use the outmost pins for plus and minus, and uh, the uh, corresponding pins next to them for the uh, corresponding cells. So the second cell is going uh, right beneath the plus connecting pin. And the third cell is going at the uh, at the negative terminal. So <laughs> whatever, let's get started. I should try to put this straight into one of those connectors, which isn't. Oh, it is quite okay. Mm, what diameter do I need? Where is my calipers? My calipers are here. Oh. My calipers are here. I'm just blind. Nineteen millimeters. Yes, for 90 millimeters, I have something nice to use. This is not it. Twenty point four. That's quite okay. Close enough. So we need a center hole. I use a three millimeter drill for it. Then I have to expand this one to, I guess it was 10 millimeters. Nine and a half, so 10 is okay. I have to use one more step in between just because I don't want to break this uh, this ceiling thing out of the case so we have to be some kind of gentle <laughs> This drill is nuts. I should get a new one. I already said that about the five millimeter, I guess. So I need five and ten millimeters. Hmm, this is going to cost a fortune. I actually don't know what this thing is called in English. In German, it is a Schraublochstanze. So you just screw it apart and get rid of all the old punched metal I have in here. <laughs> I was just too lazy to get rid of it. Then you place the good looking side. So uh, you want to place this at the good looking side because um, if you screw it together, you are most likely going to have a slight wiggle in this, so you are scratching the side where this cutting edge is uh, going. 
while the side where this smooth edge is waiting for the cutting edge to come through will most likely be unaffected from any destruction at all. And then you just screw this in. By the way, it works for nearly any material. I already used those at a um, acrylic material. I used it at metal, aluminium, steel, plastic. I already tried it at wood, I guess. I'm not quite sure about that one. Yeah, and then you just tighten the bolt. And as you can see, this cutting edge will cut its way through the materi material. And we have a perfectly round, good fitting hole for our XLR connector. So, let's make some holes. Three and a half millimeter for M3. I don't have 3.2, sadly. I guess I can get in there quite well. But on the other hand, let's do it. I need some wiring. I used this red one for the most positive cell. After the initial um, the initial positive connection connector to the battery. Ah, come here, you fucking cable. Got some nice thick cabling which I will use for the internal connection. I'm trying to pull it out of the isolation, which works quite well. So soldering iron ready. That is quite nice. Okay. Let's make them all identical in length. through here. Or may maybe I should yeah I should place some hot glue around first to give it a good seal. While we're waiting for the hot glue gun to be heated up again, I will assemble this little switch. Mm, where am I going to place it? I'm not quite sure whether I should mount it around the top. Now that wouldn't be so good because uh, this isn't a waterproof switch. So I should mount it also at the at the front through one of those um, connecting points, whatever that is called. So let's measure this one. It is six millimeters in diameter. Again, 
drilling a center hole. Getting the six millimeters. Well, maybe I should try five and a half first. Because those switches have a little screwy thing around here. And maybe I can screw it in to give it a more tight fit. Because I can't get this... Uh, I don't know if you can see it. There's a groove in this... Uh, in this thread here and normally you make some kind of recess in the casing to get uh, to, to let the groove slide over it and um, so that will prevent the switch from rotating like this while being mounted I can't build something like that so I will just try to give it a really really tight fit You can see it is making its own thread. So now we got a quite tight fit. It's not as tight as I wished it to be, but it is quite okay. Okay. That is okay. I can live with that. Why is this fucking thing blinking in red. I don't want it to do that. Charger! Where is the charger? There is the charger. Sadly enough, you can't use that hot glue gun while it is being charged. So, I guess we're going on with some is that? some assembly work. Uh, well, I don't actually know if I should mount this thing or if I should just use one of those Annoying beeping, you know what I mean, this, uh, where is it, one of those which are just a real pain in the ass because they beep like hell. I'm not quite sure. This would actually be easier to mount in a waterproof way. So... Maybe I, sh I should yeah, I should go through the effort to do this. Oh well. Where should I place it? I should place it. Hmm. Maybe I should have used another place for the for the wiring, so I should yeah I, I guess I should redo this. Quite well. Yes, that worked quite well. I guess. <laughs> I 
as you can see, I'm, I really suck at metal, you know, I'm sure saying, at metal works <laughs> and plastic works and all that stuff. I just don't have any talent for it. But let's don't get too frustrated about this. Drill a new hole. Are you ready? Yes, you are. trying to seal the display and the connection cable again using just simple hot glue and now we're going over to the connection work So if you want to find a wiring diagram for this whole assembly, you find a link down below to my written blog and there you can find the whole wiring assembly and some additional hints and tricks what I've done here. So if you want to build something similar like this, just take a look. It could be quite interesting I guess. To mount the battery pack, I just found this um, screw holes in the bottom of the uh, casing. And I thought, well, maybe I could just place some brackets around here and screw them to these screw holes. So that should, in theory, make a quite a good contact to the accumulator and I shouldn't be too concerned about it flying around in the case which as we all know isn't really what you want using a lithium-ion battery pack because those guys are quite sensitive and using those brackets it really is quite rigid and sturdy. I like that.
guess now you can see why I was kind of frustrated when I assembled this display. I assembled it upside down. Yeah. Oh well. I decided to use another push button switch to um, give this um, the, the status display just some kind of momentary option because I don't want it to drain the battery by just showing how much capacity is left. So I will use this push button and uh, solder it in between the ground wire which is going from the LiPo pack directly to the um, indicator. It's getting kind of messy in here, so let's grab some decent colored cable straps and just tie all this stuff together. Get a little bit more tidiness in here.
and it's done. I made some design changes. For example, I decided to use double wiring for the high current lines to the uh, lamp just because uh, they use two and a half millimeters diameter wire at the lamp from the factory so I decided I should use at least this size of wire but I only had one and a half millimeters diameter so I, try, I just doubled that and I got around three millimeters so that will be fine. Um, I changed the color coding again because I noticed that I used uh, blue as the negative for the uh, lithium, lithium ion battery pack and the brown wire for the positive so I choose that for um, the, the charging connector to match just the colors. Um, yeah. Uh, why I implemented this knob, I already told you, because I didn't want to drain the battery from just the charge indicator, so I implemented this knob to just, uh, this, this knob, this push button, to just uh, have a momentary function when I need to know how much capacity is left. Yeah, and that is actually <laughs> all what it is. Now I just have to glue some stuff together, make some isolations. For example, I, I want to place a good amount of hot snot around this relay to keep it from loosening up. You see I uh, secured it by using this screw, this extra long screw, which I just screwed into one of those mounting holes. Um, I will place some glue around this button. It actually has a, um, a rubber gasket around it, so I don't need to seat it, but I want it to keep it in place because the thickness of the casing is just a little bit too much to snap it in place correctly. Um, I would also like to secure the negative terminal post just a bit so that it don't come loose. The same goes for those mounting brackets for the uh, lithium ion battery pack. So I'm just being really generous using this hot glue here for the, the whole purpose that I don't want to come anything I don't want anything to come loose at all. Oh yes, and I nearly forgot I had to place a big amount of glue around those XLR connector contacts, mainly to keep the cables from rattling. And that is it. I guess we're done. Just have to screw it all together. Place this thermal cup, thermocouple wire where it belongs and close the lid. There it is, our own homemade lithium iron powered emergency flashlight. And it's quite bright. I like it. With battery indicator. 